Here we are, Esmeralda. Come on, lass. Straight over the roof and sharp left. I thought so. It's one of Caps. You think he trains them to indulge in this kind of behaviour, Meredith? Of course he does, Clifford. He gets a backhander from the dry cleaners. Here, Esmeralda. Here, Esmeralda. Here, Esmeralda. Come on, Esmeralda. Your toast's getting cold. Hey, <laughs> Can't you help your missus for once? You can see how she's struggling. Sorry, Pat, we didn't realise you were trying to say something, did we, Esmeralda? Esmeralda, isn't that the pigeon that you sold to Freddie Roberts? That's right. Come on, Esmeralda. Breakfast time. <coughs> what? She says, won't Freddie Roberts find out? I shouldn't think so, missus. In you go, Geraldine. Now, where did I put that little tin of black paint? trying to tell Andy something. I thought you'd never ask. And I've got a painter and decorator's cap, a window cleaner's overalls, a joiner's apron, a nurse's cape, and an errand boy's bike all waiting in the wings. Oh, and I'll give you another one. What's this? Travelling salesman. You're cold. Give me a mime. It's your wife, leaving home because I've had enough of doing half a dozen people's jobs around here. Yes, I've got the point, Pet. Now, why don't all six of you sit down and have a tea break? I understand, Flo. We all have that Monday morning feeling. Look at me, for instance. Do I have to? He has it seven mornings a week. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Anyway, what have you got to complain about? Me back. What's wrong with it now? You managed to be flat on it again last night. It's playing me up, Flo. I can't sleep. You what? You were snoring the minute your head touched the landing. Everyone sleeps at night, twit. I'm talking about the daytime. Yes, well, while you were lying awake in agony this morning, your dutiful wife was queuing at the doctor's. What did he say? It wasn't only him, it was his partner. They both agreed, I need a complete change. They could be right. Tell you what, Flo, when you go to work today, why don't you wear your brown dress and your blue shoes instead of your blue dress and your brown shoes? Do you think so? It's not what I think, Pet, it's what the doctors think. They've got trained minds, you know. I'm glad you've got faith in the medical profession, cos I'll tell you something else what they think. They think it's high time my worthless, shiftless, idle, good-for-nothing husband got off his backside and started to pull his weight. Your doctor said that? Both of them. I want a third opinion. Are you playing the best of three frames, Milky, or the worst of three frames? I'm sorry, Mr. Cap. I just don't seem to be able to concentrate today. Are you? Are we getting married this morning or not? Any chance of a word with him, missus? Sorry, lads, he's out unwinding. How long will that take? Hard to say. When did he start unwinding? 1962. It doesn't get easier, Chalky. I used to be a crack shot starting with a double. On the other hand, he's getting quite a name for finishing with a treble. Now, let's see. While he was playing snooker, I was scrubbing the steps. While he was playing darts, I was dusting. He'll be playing cards now, so it must be time to clean up the kitchen.
afraid the cards aren't running for you, Percy. The night is young. What time is it by my watch, Mr. Cap? Into each life a little rainbow must fall with a crock of gold at the end of it. At least this is the one night of the week I don't have to cook for him. What is it now? Life's full of surprises with this one. None of them pleasant. Hello, it's Andy. What's happened? What is it? Tell me, Chalky. Tell me. He wants 12 bacon sandwiches to go. Don't move, pet. If you'd bother to dig your flipping lighter out of the side of that sofa, I could leave these corsets off. Right, I'll see you when I see you, Flo. And now you can go out to play when other people are working, I do not know. Relax, woman, it takes all sorts to make a world. Yes, and look at the state it's in. It's always the same when she's laying lino. As soon as she's followed a few tacks, she gets all tetchy. Now then, Walter, a bit early for falling into the canal, isn't it? You're right. But I've got to go to a funeral. So the wife wants me sober by dinner time. It's hard life, Walter. It is that. Not on any moon then, Milky. No. She called it off. So why jump in the canal? I'll let her sell me the ring back for more than I paid for it. Oh, I see. That one. Don't wrap it, throw it. You see, he likes to be able to tell me he caught it. It's a big one. You'll want the red carpet treatment. Flo can be very sarky sometimes, Flo can. Now, now, Flo, six days shalt thou labour. And on the seventh day shalt thou do all the jobs you didn't have time for on the other six. I'm off, Flo! Flo! That's funny. I could have sworn you were upstairs cleaning the windows. You want to do something about your appearance, woman? You know what it is. I hope you won't feel disadvantaged playing four men short, Mr. Cap. That's all right, Percy. We'll just have to kick four equalisers. It's going to be one of those games. He means players, not goals. Celebration. He's expected to clock up his hundred foul of the season. <coughs> Ow! The first time anyone's ever been sent off during the kickabout. Right. That's the third time you've broken that window this season. What are you going to do about it? Find a new striker. And I suppose you want your ball back. Oh, I don't know, pal. How much will you give us on it? How did it go today, Pat? It was a good, clean game, I'm sorry to say. And how was the man of the match? Between these four walls, Flo, I didn't play me best. Never mind. Nobody's perfect. And exactly what do you mean by that? Look at him. HMS vulnerable. Now just cut that... Oh! Oh! Oh, what is it, pet? Is your toy boat or am your big toe again? Oh, it's me back again. I've strained it. Oh, dear me. Maybe you should stay off it for a while. I'll clobber you when I get out of this bath. 
What if I can't get out of it? I'm in agony. It could be your old injury playing York. I think it is. It's never been right, Flo. I should have demanded compensation. Industrial accident. He fell off the sofa while dreaming he had a job. This is serious, woman. What am I going to do? You could try lying on your stomach. You don't understand, Flo. This is an emergency. How am I going to get to the pub? You'll find a way. Didn't even have to put his thinking cap on. Why do we do it, Ruby? <laughs> Why, why? For the same reason people climb Mount Everest. Because we're soft in the head. At least your chalky goes out to work occasionally. Compared with my Andy, he's a saint in heaven. Oh, I wish he was sometimes. But I can't complain. For one thing, he won't let me. But what do you do, Ruby, when he drives you right up the wall? Well, I sit down calmly and try to work out where our marriage has gone wrong. Then I drive him up the wall. <laughs> it's the only way, Flo. You have to play them at their own game. You're right. Play them at their own game, did you say? Never fails. I'll buy you a milk stout, Ruby. You've given me an idea. <laughs> to tie your own laces. If that's all right, pet, I'm off to work. So am I, as soon as I've fed me pigeons. Can you lend me a fiver to put me bets on? Certainly. What? There you are. You try to spoil all me pleasures, don't you? Oh, sorry, pet. I wasn't thinking. Lend you a fiver? You seem to think fivers grow on trees. If they did, yours would have Dutch Elm's disease. So if you don't want chopping down, poppy up. That's better. You must never take me for granted, pet. Fascinating creatures homing pigeons, aren't they, Mr. Cap? I think it's wonderful how no matter where they are, they can always find their way home. But all that clever, missus. Me and Chalky manage it every night and we can't even fly. Can't even fly? You can't even walk most nights. Esmeralda, I want you to take this note to my foreman at work. You know, Freddy Roberts. He bought you from Andy last week. Here, Geraldine. Here, Geraldine. Right. Now you go straight home and no pub in mind, because I'll be able to smell it on your beak. Dear Freddy, here is your pigeon. Cannot get into work this week as I shall be in hospital. Flo, you have the gift of prophecy. Is that you, daughter? It is, mother. What are you doing off work? Are you baller? Never felt better. Why? Has he fallen under the bus? <laughs> You've got a morbid sense of humour, mother. But I like it. <laughs> Here comes a picnic set. I've had my eye on for the new patio. How do, pal? How do, barbecue? I mean, how do, Andy? Oh, well, the mountain comes to Mohammed. He's not here, Mrs. Cap. Pity. He could have picked me a few losers. A barbecue set, a weather-resistant picnic table, four collapsible chairs and a sun umbrella. Oi! I've got a few bones to pick with you. Don't you start, mate, or they'll be picking your bones off the floor. Why aren't you at work? The same reason you're not at work. It makes me sick to look at it. I resent that! I don't deny it, but I resent it. Right, since you're here, I suppose you'll be wanting a few tips. Yes, please. What is the best method for getting gravy stains out of a cotton shirt? Nothing to it. I just backed all his horses to come in last. 
You know, successful pub management's about making decisions, like which conversation to eavesdrop on. Don't look now, Grandad, but Percy's canoodling with your wife. I oh, know, she's trying to make me jealous. And aren't you? Not yet. I'm waiting to see if she buys him a drink. Is he watching us, Flo? Are you nervous? Not at all. Just flipping petrified. Don't worry, Percy. He won't bop you. He sprained his wrist this morning, stirring his own tea. Did he? Hey, you! Where's my rent? Fell at the second fence. I'm giving you three days to pay. Thanks. I'll have Christmas Day, Easter Monday and Pancake Tuesday. Are you coming to the pictures on Saturday, Shirley? Can't. I'm getting married. Again? What do you mean, again? I'm not a flipping bigamist. Well, let me put it this way. You've been engaged more times in one year than the ladies love. How did you come to get tied up with that bloke in the first place, Flo? I met him under very unfortunate circumstances, Percy. I was single. You had a lovely figure in them days. Andy thought so too. 200 quid in the post office savings bank. So you're getting wed? That Milky's a very lucky bloke. It isn't Milky. That's what I'm saying, he's a very lucky bloke. Get back in the knife box, Grandad. Anyway, it doesn't take all day to get married. Whoever this lunatic is, ask him if he can spare you for a couple of hours. I don't like to. I don't know him well enough. I only wish Andy believed in wife swapping flow. Oh, he does. If you happen to have an half-sized billiards table you've no use for, he'll give it serious consideration. <coughs> is this the Boilermaker's Arms, or is it Sodom and Gomorrah? Just asking. Sodom and Gomorrah? Didn't they send over a Domino's team last year? <coughs> I wonder if that missionary's job's still going in North Borneo. Who are we slaying this week, Chalky? The Jolly Riveters. And be warned, I've been told they got a crack new player known as the Masked Marvel. That's right. Very nice. Yes, a distinct improvement. Now, what am I supposed to aim for? The board. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Phantom of the Opera, they all know you in here, so nobody's going to get the shock of their lives. Take that flipping mask off. Sorry, it brings me luck. Actually, I'm afraid that if he sees I'm playing with my eyes closed, he'll find something in the rule book against it. You might catch the other one. The only thing you're likely to catch is a cold. Luck. <laughs> it's not luck at all. I use a different bait and different tackle. And a different fishmonger. Never mind, Andy. At least there's one domain in this pub still bad to women. What's he thinking of, Rube? The gents? <laughs> <laughs> There you are, Flo. I've set him up for you. Your break, and he doesn't mean it's your coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> Flo, now what was the first thing I taught you? To, to take, take the cue out, out of its case. case. What cue? We're still four men short, Chalky. How about that big hefty programme seller? The one with the broken nose? Do you reckon he'll play for us? Not him, twit. Find out who broke it for him. That's why he'll always be captain and I'll always be the one who slices the lemons. I wonder he didn't ask his missus to play. He did, but she's busy.
I might have gone too far this time. I'll be glad when this one's behind me. I know I've been telling them for years to share one another's interests, but this is ridiculous. Lucky goals, he minded. It was when I scored one and the captain kissed me. Now there's such a thing as pushing your luck. A small step for woman, a giant step for womankind. Just you put the other foot in and see what happens. This is flipping ridiculous. How about a truce, then? Well, I certainly don't want another week like this one. Neither do I. I've been doing you an injustice, Pet. I never realised how exhausting avoiding work can be. I'm glad you appreciate what I have to put up with. But in future, it's share and share alike. Agreed? Agreed. We work together and play together. Right? Right. We share our pleasures and we share our troubles. OK? OK. Now, who can that be? You know that new barmaid at the Limpin Cockroach? What about her? Our husbands come round and knock our teeth down our throats. <gasps> oh! Now, now, Flo, remember our bargain? All right! We're coming! Good evening, Mr. Cut. Oh! oh, oh! <laughs> You should come up here sometime. It's an education. We all make mistakes. Let's see how many he makes next week. Get indoors, you. <laughs> in the pub you can catch both if you try now the wife has a job we can all feel safe cause our minds on something else i can talk to women who will buy me beer without the threat of wedding bells yeah.